Hello again. I found a beautiful spot on the White River. This is near the Dalles Campground on Highway 410. I'm gonna try to make something of this scene. Beautiful scene with lots of color. Not much snow on the ground and that's okay. Uh, lots of beautifully colorful rocks and the water has a lot of reflected color. The challenge is going to be simplifying the scene. So I'll try to group group things into big shapes. I'll try to make that background bank of pines one shape. The line of deciduous trees below those pines another shape. The river flowing away from us into that scene. This gravelly bank that gravelly bank and then just a few of these boulders. So an exercise in simplifying a big scene. I hope you can hear me over the river here. The river rapids are kind of noisy right here. So some of my commentary may not come through. It's supposed to get cloudy and maybe some snow in the middle of the day here, so I'll try to move pretty quickly. I'll get as far as I can with the light as it is, and if I have to finish in the studio, I can take my reference photos in this video and the colors that I mix and finish up later in the studio. All right, I'm trying something a little different today. Um, I'm going to be taking some longer painting trips, so I wanted to try this pad of oil primed linen canvas sheets from Centurion. It's a deluxe oil prime linen. I've used them before by taping them down on board in the studio. I wanted to try doing plain air, so what I can do is just fold open the pad and kind of fasten down just the top sheet and paint on it and then peel that off and paint on the next sheet and it should travel travel really light. Turpentine here I'll start with a turpentine sketch and turpentine wash. Got ivory black, Rem Rembrandt cold gray, titanium white, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, lizard and crimson, cad red, cad yellow, gambling radiant lemon, yellow ochre. And then I've got some colors mixed up from a painting I was doing yesterday. I'll try to use those if I can, otherwise I'll just leave them off to the side. I'll start with a small sketch in turpentine. And just try to roughly map in where I want the big shapes. That background bank of pines. This is roughly the upper one-third line. I don't have it sketched in on this pad. I'll just have to kind of estimate it. At the bank of the river about here. And I'm just going to pick out a couple of these. I think I want to raise this bank of the river up a little. Add one bigger boulder on the bank here. Here's the line of rapids. There's a really bright, vibrant red rock. I'm gonna move it just a little bit closer into the scene.
something like that for the sketch. I'll go into the turpentine wash. I'll use a little bit of ultramarine blue with my alizarin crimson for the sky. If I use this for the river, it's pretty, the river is dark compared to the rest of the landscape, so I'll go ahead and use this dark mixture. Take a paper towel and then wipe away some of the paint to expose some lights. Set up the value pattern. Again, I'm just adding in some paint. Now that I've taken the lights away, I'm adding back some darker paint just to establish a little bit of a no tan. So with the no tan I like to establish a distinct light and dark pattern. So you can see I've got shadow everywhere this blue water is and then moving up into some shadows in the trees in the background. I want to make sure I have a, a connected path of shadow, of, of dark, and it can be kind of squiggly and, and kind of complicated, and sometimes that's pretty interesting, if it is. I don't like how this line is unbroken, so I want to break it just a little bit. And right now I'm thinking more about value than about color. I don't know if I'll keep that blue. I might turn it dark green. There's some beautiful, rich dark sap greens in the water. I want the edge of the bank of the, the river over here to be a little more broken, not quite so flat. If I have boulders, I want the boulders up front to be big and the boulders in the distance to be small. One of the reasons I'm doing this experiment is to see how this pad does when I do the wash. If the, if the next sheet is covered in part of this wash, then I may have to change how I seal it. I may have to tape the edges or something different. So this is just an experiment. It doesn't have to result in a, a beautiful painting. If it does result in a beautiful painting, I can take this sheet of canvas and glue it down with a, an acid-free archival glue, I can glue it to a panel and then frame it. Okay, so I think that's a nice path for the eye to follow. Kind of comes into the river, follows the river along this edge, and there's some different lines that it can follow from there. All right, so I'll put the turpentine up, clean my palette off, and mix up the colors that I see in the scene. All right, I've got some color mixed up, not real well organized. Got a letter value for the sky down closer to the horizon, a richer value up toward the top of the sky. I can also use those colors to show some reflection in the water. Got shadow in the background trees, light on the background trees, and some accent marks of some mossy dead trees and trunks coming up. Then I've got a deep uh, blue for the reflected sky on the water in the distance. A little greener kind of shadow in the well of the rapids pretty close to the reflection of those distant trees some deciduous tree colors some rock colors 
and then this is a uh, this is also a darker slightly greenish brown rock color and then I can just use these colors that I mixed to suggest the, the color of the water. Light's changing pretty quickly as the sun moves higher and as some clouds roll in. So I'm going to go a bit by memory and just by what looks good on the on the linen as I paint. I used up most of those colors from yesterday. I've got just a couple left over. And it's okay that I, I use them because they're all mixed from this same range of colors. And mostly from yellow ochre, cad yellow, cad red, blizzard crimson, and ultramarine blue, cerulean blue as well. Those are the main colors. And then just I grabbed some of the other colors like sap green for the trees and burnt umber for some of the browns. Start with a clean. Rosemary Evergreen Flap, this is a number four. I'm gonna start by painting the, the distant background, the sky, and then the pines, and then the deciduous trees, and just keep marching forward. They're clean and get them just a little damn salt to wet the brush. Let's start with a higher value sky color first. Use the same brush. Not going to clean it out, just going to dip right into the, the light on that distant bank of pines. There's a, a mountain here. I don't know if I need it. It's got a, a line of pines and then a line of snow. Maybe I'll dip into this darker sky color with my lighter pine color and just see what it looks like if I throw that line of trees in there. A little too rich, I wanna throw a little more blue. Maybe a touch of this darker blue as well. I don't wanna go right to the corner, so I'll go a little bit below the corner. Yeah, that looks okay. Maybe add a touch of gray. Okay, now I'll go into the pines in front of that. And there are some foreground pines here that were closer than these, and they were mostly in shadow. I don't know if I'll include those or not. I'll, I'll play with it as I go. That doesn't seem light enough. I'm gonna dip into this color and lighten this up in general. It's a little closer, still seems a little dark. I think I'll dip into some of this yellow as well. This radiant lemon is a radiant, vibrant yellow. It's also high value, so it's nice. You can shift things a little higher value without losing your chroma. But it is a cooler yellow. Part of the problem is I've, is I've lost the sun on the scene, and so everything looks a little more muted. The shadows aren't as dark back here. There's 
less contrast, so it's throwing me off a little bit. But I'll just keep going. Press in this shadow. It's a little dark as the way I have it mixed, but as it blends into the color I have down it, it works. Press in this more orange light on the pines. dark, so I'm going to dip into some of this thing and lighten this whole pile a little bit. Trying to keep the paint kind of thin and the edge is real soft in this distant background. Now this bank of pines are richer and slightly higher contrast, so a little richer chroma and go just a little lighter and darker. Lighter in the highlights and darker in the shadows. I want to keep it real simple. I don't want to paint individual trees or individual branches, just kind of rough shapes. Okay, now I'm going to try throwing in some of these pines that were in shadow earlier. See how that looks. It's kind of following the no tan that I established with my wash. I'm throwing a little bit of straight trap green. Yellow to lighten it up. This shows some of these branches as they're turning toward the sun. I'm just going to continue with the same brush and paint these deciduous trees. I had to get my heated gloves on. It's getting cold now that I'm in the shade. experiment I think with this linen pad let me take it off there and, and see what it looks like if it messed up any of the other sheets looks like the other sheets are pretty much fine well, I'll take it back to my studio and clean it up that was a real challenge with the light changing so much. I was afraid it would be, but I just kind of powered through and used the colors that I mixed earlier, adjusted as I needed to to make the painting look good, not necessarily match the scene, but to give harmony in the painting. 
think I'll, I'll take it back to the studio and scrape off some of the ridges and see if there's something here that I want to work further on or if I want to maybe just save it as a study and use it for reference later. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.